the atomic bomb dome and that is the building that has been preserved so that people can remember what at least one of the buildings looked like just minutes after the atomic bomb exploded over Hiroshima. Um, I will say that it has evoked lots and lots of feelings in all of us just walking on the same sidewalks and walking in the city that was just so completely decimated in 1945 on August 6th. Yeah and I think even taking the politics and, and the war out of it itself uh, just being at this spot where something extraordinary happened. Um, you know we've been to the Normandy beaches and that had a much different feeling uh, in, in some of the same ways you honor what happened there, but that was very much about the soldiers and it's very much about the war. Um, this feels very, very different. Uh, this does not feel about the war, even though obviously uh, that's part of it. Um, but this was about 140,000 people's lives instantly wiped out uh, in a moment, in a blink. And um, that just brings a weight with it that is different. Um, and yeah, a lot of people lost their lives in World War II. And I don't want to debate sort of whether this was a good thing or bad thing. If it stopped the war, if it stopped other lives from being lost, it really doesn't matter. I think what's important when you stand here and realize that in this very same spot, you know, 70 odd years ago, uh, something happened that really should never happen again. And we're in an environment now where it's being talked about and the idea of nuclear warfare is being brought up again. And being here and in the context of our modern day, um, it's disturbing, I think. It's just because we've seen, we've been through the Peace Memorial Museum, we've seen pictures, and this city really has embraced uh, peace um, all through the town. That's really, and I think that's the town motto even, um, it's the city of peace, and they tried to get uh, cities from all over the world to sign on and be cities of peace and I think it's great that they took something so awful um, and something so destructive to their city and have turned it around into something um, very positive and the spirit of the people here is you know is that and, and even the the memorials and the museum um, yeah they show the devastation but they're they tend to turn around and make it a positive like let's not go back Let's make this city representative of a one-time event, um, too, I guess, with Nagasaki. But uh, really, that's the spirit of what's here with the memorials, with the museum, is that let's not have this event be in vain. of the Children's Peace Monument here in Hiroshima and this is actually a monument that was inspired by uh, Sadako Sasaki I think is how you say her name she was a little girl who was exposed to radiation from the atomic bomb at the age of two and ten years later she contracted leukemia and um, I guess one of the I don't know if it's like a folklore or what happens but it, I guess there's if you make um, a thousand origami paper cranes then you would have a wish that is granted. I'm not sure if that's exactly how the story goes, but um, she began making the paper cranes in the hope that she could um, kick leukemia. And she, as the story goes, she was only able to make 600 or something cranes and she ended up dying. So behind the um, Children's Peace Monument, you'll see that there are just um, loads and loads of paper cranes, like um, garlands of paper cranes that um, people send in from all over the world in order to sort of complete her project. So um, it's actually really fascinating. But um, the monument was actually created by children of Japan, as I understand it, and I think over 3,200 schools um, 
raise enough money to make this monument as a sort of memorial of all of the children who were either killed or affected in some way by the atomic bomb. Okay, so this is really cool. This picture, this entire picture here, is actually made of origami cranes. It's very fascinating. So right over my shoulder here is the Eternal Flame here at the Peace Memorial Park in Hiroshima. And it's a beautiful causeway that goes, um, leads right up to the atomic bomb dome. And basically the story behind the Eternal Flame is they vowed to keep the Eternal Flame lit until the last nuclear weapon is extinguished uh, from the earth. So let's hope it goes out soon.